This past week, Google had hosted the I.O. conference, where they've introduced a bunch of revolutionary models and coding agents like the upgraded Gemini 2.5 Pro with DeepThink and Gemini 2.5 Flash with better performance metrics. Plus, the release of Gemma 3 and which is topping the list of new models as well as new AI coding agents. These new Gemini models are insanely powerful and cost efficient, which is why it's ideally being used for a Gentech workflows. The Gemini 2.5 series, in fact, is constructed with speed and value at scale with the Gentech capabilities. And it has many features like being natively multimodal. It has the ability to have native audio, having long context, and much more. The Gemini 2.5 Flash specifically, which just got upgraded, is a model that is super cost efficient while packing a punch with its performance. You can see in terms of its pricing, it is something that is ideal to use for any sort of complex task as it is capable of doing quite well in almost every category like science, reasoning, math, coding, and many other benchmarks where it outpaces models like Claude 3.7 Sonnet, Croc 3 Beta, and even DeepSeek R1. So imagine this, if you're able to integrate these models into your agentic workflow, you can potentially automate any task and have it function as your own personal AI assistant. That's the real power here. And that's exactly why today I'll be showcasing how you can create your own AI agent the easiest way possible powered by the Gemini 2.5 model series. We're going to be using a platform we've showcased multiple times on this channel called VectorShift, a no-code drag and drop platform that makes building smart AI agents incredibly simple. VectorShift is the fastest way to build AI apps and workflows where you can automate workflows and back office process with no code required. It's an all-in-one ecosystem for you to build, deploy, and manage any sort of AI agent, application, chatbot, and much more. And the best part is, you can easily get started for free within their platform as they offer a free tier. So to get started, use the link in the description below and click on Get Started. This will prompt you to create an account, but if you already have an account, simply go ahead and log in. But if you are creating an account for the first time, you can either do it with your email address or with the Google account or with GitHub. Afterwards, you're going to be then sent over to the main dashboard of VectorShift. This is essentially where you can access all of your pipelines, all of your chatbots, workflows, and etc. On the left hand side, you can easily manage through your pipelines as well, your workbooks, knowledge, and so much more. But what we're going to be doing is creating a pipeline from scratch. To do so, head over to the pipeline tab and then you can create a new pipeline. But you can also create chatbots, forums, and much more. But what we're going to be doing is showcasing how you can easily create these different AI agents powered by this model. There's also templates that you can easily and readily access to automate almost anything. But what we're going to be doing is creating a pipeline from scratch to demonstrate how easy it is to use this drag and drop builder to easily construct any sort of AI agent powered by the Gemini 2.5 models. So what I'm going to be doing is showcasing how easy it is to simply create these different agents within this vector shift platform with these drag and drop components. Now, what we're going to be doing is simply showcasing how to create a conversational agentic workflow powered by the amazing Gemini 2.5 Pro models. This is where we're going to have it so that these conversational workflows are multi-purpose workflows for creating assistance, chatbots, as well as workflow automations. It's a super powerful feature that is designed to help you in each step of the way and having AI take over the conversation to automate things like data entry with different integrations, process different questions, reporting, and so much more. So I'll be creating an AI conversational chatbot that is going to be agentic and has the ability to solve any sort of query asking about what vector shift is. It will resolve any sort of query that you might have, and it will even implement any sort of solution that you would require with different sorts of integrations. So think of this as like a chatbot that is for a company, but it is agentic. Now, this is where we're going to go into the conversational tab and we're going to create our first node that is a conversational node. Now, this is the start of our agentic workflow, and we're going to have it so that it starts off with a message. This is where it's going to start off 
by educating whoever uses our chatbot about what vector shift services are. So this is the message I have that's going to welcome people. So let's connect the start node to this. And this will be a talk node that will have the AI mention this certain message. But we're also going to have it mention an image. So you have four different capabilities of having the AI output at the start. We're going to have it output an image that highlights the actual app of vector shift. So let's grab a screenshot of this and provide this image over here. But before we actually have the AI provide assistance, we want to validate if they are already subscribed to our services, because this is a paid service that we're only going to be providing to people who are actually a part of our subscription. So this is where we're going to have it capture the name, and then we're also going to have it capture their email address. So let's place down a talk node and we're going to have it uh, select it as a message because they're going to input whoever is using this and it's going to be validated to input a message which is going to be in the form of an email address. So now we have all this connected. We're going to have it ask what is your email and then it's going to capture it. But to validate this, we're going to use the Gemini 2.5 Pro to have it so that it is going to validate if this is an actual email, a part of the subscription. And you can also have it linked to a database to validate it where the AI can scour through a Google Sheet to see if they are actually a valid subscriber. So I gave it a system instruction, but now let's connect the capture node to this prompt over here. And to do so, what we're going to do is write in the prompt that we're going to be capturing, which is email. And then we're going to click on insert variable and select the second capture node, which is going to be capturing the email. So now that we have the large language model node powering this workflow, we're actually going to add a condition because we have it within the system instruction. If the email is not valid, I'll put no. And then if the email is valid, I'll put yes. And this is where within the logic tab, you want to place on a condition node so that it is able to process two different queries afterwards. So I set it so that the input that I get from the Google large language model node is going to have two different inputs, yes or no. If it is no, we're going to take the second output and we're going to have it cycle back into capturing a valid email. So this is where we're going to connect it to this message node over here. And you can see that it is highlighted blue. This is a second node operating within the message node. And this is where we're going to have it repeat another message where we're going to say you entered in an invalid email please enter in a valid one. And until it puts in a valid one, it is then going to then process it within the yes node, which is the condition that we're going to set afterwards. This is where we're now going to place down another talk node. And we're going to say, uh, how can I actually help you after it validates the correct email? But how are we actually going to validate our emails and names? Well, this is actually a spreadsheet that I have. And what we're going to do is go over to integrations and first place down a Google Sheet node. And we're going to have it so that it adds a new row. So make sure you connect it to your account and afterwards select the correct sheet. So let's go and find our correct sheet. In this case, it is the email list and select the actual spreadsheet and then click confirm selection. Now, what we're going to do is first have it so that it inputs the first capture node, which is capture zero, the name, and then the capture one, which is the email. There we go. So it's going to actually display all of the names and captures of emails before it actually validates it. So that's actually a problem. We don't want it to fill out invalid emails and invalid names. So this is where we're going to have it clicked on the dependency feature. So if you click on the settings tab, select dependency, we're going to have it so that it only accepts from the condition, which is path zero, the outputs that we get from path zero, which is yes, and validated by the AI. And it will then only add those new fields from the actual condition node that is validated. And there we go. We now have this agentic workflow so that it then validates all the responses within our email sheet. And then it will then later provide assistance. Now to save some time, I created a chatbot that is going to then process any sort of queries. This is a basic Q&A chatbot where after it proceeds forward with the yes condition, which is where it is provided a, a actual valid email, it's going to then ask further questions, whether if you have any question. So if you have any sort of question, it will then answer it based off the knowledge base reader that I had provided. It's essentially where I'm providing various sorts of files as well as references to emails or sorry, to URLs that provide context to the overall 
website of VectorShift, and then it's going to use the Genta capabilities of the Google model to answer those questions based off that context. This is where I added two different prompts. One is the question, and the second one is the context to actually respond based off the knowledge base. And then it's going to send in the message. After it sends in the message, it's going to ask any additional questions. And then what I have done is placed on a button node. So if you actually place down a listen node, you can select button. And this is where at the end, it's going to ask yes or no if you have any additional questions. If not, you can then conclude the actual response or conversation and say thank you, have a nice day. If yes, it's going to then repeat this question. What is your question? Now you have two cycler uh, inputs for this. So you can then repeat the whole cycle and it will then process this whole query again. That is essentially how you can create an agentic conversational flow. But let's now deploy the changes and actually see how it functions. So just click on the run and what you can do is you can see that it's going to start off with the first message where it says, may I know your name and display the actual infographic that we have set. So my name is Mahi, click enter. It's going to then ask us uh, the input, which is going to be what is your email. So this is where we're going to provide hello at email.com. This is just a base email. I didn't link it to a database, so I have it set so that it is going to validate an email that says hello at gmail.com. And what's cool is that it will then output it within your Google Sheet, the name as well as the email that you had provided and after it has been validated. And after it provides the email, it will then work with the conversational flow that we have set. We can ask it questions like what is vector shift and it will answer it based off the knowledge base that we have provided. And you can see right away it is then working on providing a good summary of what vector shift is and it will also ask us any additional questions we have it set for a button and to get a good visualization of this you can actually export this as a chatbot so let's just give it a random name create the chatbot you can actually design this add your own logo a name and afterwards you can export this as a link where you can embed it within your website within slack within whatsapp or sms in this case, we're just going to open it up as a link and you can see that you can now access it within this chatbot over here. This is the capability of how you can easily create any sort of AI agent like validating accounts and then providing assistance to those validated subscribers. That's basically how you can easily create these conversational agentic workflows with Vectorshift powered by the Gemini 2.5 models. This is how easy it is. I'll leave all these links in the description below. But with that thought guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video and got a good grasp as to how you can use vector shifts capabilities to easily develop anything. There's so much more to this where you can easily configure things to create various sorts of automations, chatbots, voice bots, and so much more. I'll leave all these links in the description below. Subscribe to the second channel, join our newsletter as well as our discord. Follow me on Twitter as well as subscribing to the YouTube channel, turn on the notification bell like this video and please take a look at our previous videos because there's a lot of content that you'll truly benefit from but with that thought guys have an amazing day spread positivity and i'll see you guys fairly shortly peace out fellas